Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello, hello. Hey there, William. Good to see ya. Made it. Were you uh, worried that you weren't going to make it? Ah, that's right. Got to have your priorities straight. <laughs> Skyrim streams before, well, anything else. <laughs> hey, Magus. Good to see you drop in. And Baofish. How's uh, Gopher's video so far? I saw like the first two seconds of it just to put it on my uh, watch later queue because I still haven't gotten past his or through his uh, previous one yet. Oh, Loki, our favorite god. And our most humble one as well. Yeah, I saw the thing about the baby Terrence, but I don't know how they got to baby Terrence, so... <laughs> yeah, sounds like you're having some crashing issues. Man, how do you get better than a baby troll?
That is an ill-fated wedding. I guess Mara just couldn't condone that relationship. Alright, I'll be back in like five seconds. I'm just going to grab a drink just in case I get thirsty. Mara is so judgmental, huh? All right, all right, let's get started. I'd rather be playing Skyrim than looking at screenshots. How about that? Yeah, at William, actually, I grabbed the batteries <clears throat> while I was uh, asking how you were, <laughs> since you were the first one that popped up. I got a pair of batteries ready to go. <laughs> I actually just changed them out uh, recently, so I probably won't have to change. I actually don't remember having to change last time, either. if I'm thinking about it. Fixed point of current streams. Hey, you know what? I would rather change batteries twice than have two crashes. Like we did last time. Hey, there's Aster. Oh, jeez. Are we getting stream issues again? Okay, well, I'll just have to keep an eye on it. I remember last Saturday we were having issues with uh, stream stability as well. Okay, so that might have just been on Loki's side over there. Yeah, the uh, the battery change kind of gives everything a chance to, to settle into its cache. Buffer and everything, as it were. Okay, so last time we did the uh, In My Time of Need quest with Sadia. Uh, we decided to side with Kamatu. We thought that would be the best way to avoid bloodshed. <clears throat> And parts of Sadia's story really just didn't add up. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, although Sadia's desperation was real, Jagasta could tell that she was desperate. He felt really bad about betraying her like that, but I think he still landed in a place last time where he thought he made the right decision, or at least the best decision. The less bad decision. <laughs> um, okay, just checking on the on the buffering and everything there. Um, but during his time in uh, White Run, uh, he uh, journeyed into the Drunken Huntsman where a courier cornered him and gave him a letter from a Mr. Marcus. And it looks like I got rid of that letter already. Damn, I was going to read it. Uh, anyway, there's this guy named Marcus Janus uh, at Dead Man's Drink in Falkreath, <coughs> which is the inn over there. Um... <coughs> 
And that, I'm sorry, my throat is just not cooperating this morning. Give me just one second. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, if it's not the controller, if it's not YouTube, it's my voice. All right. Um, so yeah, the letter was looking for Jugasta by name. Um, and it seemed to be a bit of a desperate missive uh, asking for his help in Falkreath specifically. Um, so it seems like Jagasta is making a bit of a name for himself uh, in his journeys and whatnot, uh, his heroic exploits. Um, and he is the type of Khajiit that is going to is not going to turn somebody down who is asking him for help directly. That's how he got into the mess with Sadia, um, and then Kamachu after that. So he is going to go to Falkreath and see what this Marcus has to say to him. Uh, even though he was on his way to the Shrine of Azura in northeastern uh, Skyrim, to kind of pay pilgrimage to Azura, who is a chief deity in the Khajiit, uh, Khajiit pantheon over there. Um, this seems a little bit more immediate. So Azura's shrine will be there, but as this person seemed fairly desperate, he's going to make his way to Falkreath instead. Make a bit of a detour. Um, and I know that uh, <clears throat> a lot of you have played through this mod. This is uh, the Helgen Reborn mod. Uh, one of my favorite quest mods. I think it uh, adds a lot to the game that probably should have been there uh, from the beginning in the vanilla game. I just hate to see Helgen destroyed for the entire thing. Uh, it was kind of like Kavach in Oblivion. Even after you clear everything out, there just never seems to be an option to help the place recover. And it seems like there really should be. Uh, and I just think that the mod is really well done. The voice acting's good, it gets a little hokey with some characters in, in some areas, but um, technically it works really well. I've never really had a problem with it. Um, Adds a nice little player home and everything. Some nice uh, nice equipment, uh, a follower or two. I think just the one. I don't remember her name, but uh, she's really well done as well. So, yeah, and this was mostly just kind of a, a role play decision at this point because... Uh, I really was not planning on doing this from the beginning. I really wanted to make it up to Northeast Skyrim because that's where uh, my master level training is for pickpocket and light armor. Not in the vanilla game. Uh, in the vanilla game you'd have to see Nazir in the Dark Brotherhood for light armor master level training. Or um, the, I think it's Vipir the Fleet in the Thieves Guild for Master Level Pickpocket training. And uh, I just didn't see Jagasta making a dark turn like that and doing either the Thieves Guild or the Dark Brotherhood just in order to get that training. If you that makes sense. Make sure I'm going the right way here. So, I made a little mod of my own that just makes the uh, Silda the Unseen in Windhelm and Scouts Many Marshes on the docks in Windhelm, which are pickpocket and light armor trainers, relatively. Uh, I turned them into master level trainers. Um, the light armor thing is obvious. Uh, light armor is tied directly to our unarmed 
uh, damage and perks and stuff that we can take in that subtree. Uh, pickpocket is something that I want to get more into as far as uh, disarming enemies. So if I can pickpocket the enemy's weapons off of them before I engage with them, uh, I can force unarmed combat, hand-to-hand uh, -hand duels as it were, and I think that would give us a huge advantage combat-wise if we could force those hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat situations. Weather here is kind of rough. It's been raining all day. Actually, since we left uh, Whiterun on our way to Falkreath, uh, it's been raining all the way through Riverwood to where we are right now, which is fairly close to Falkreath. So I think Jagasta is uh, really looking forward to some better, better weather. Although where I'm at, Arizona, southwestern United States, we've been in a drought for 30 years. Uh, probably more than that at this point. So we have come to relish our rainy weather here. <laughs> so this looks quite nice to me. Um, I linked to uh, some NPC visual overhauls for interesting NPCs. I'm not running it right now just because I've learned my lesson as far as adding mods uh, mid-Let's Play. Uh, she still looks good with just total character makeover, doing its thing. Um, but she looks much better with the, with the overhaul. I, I actually did test that out on a couple different uh, profiles. Works well. No gray face bugs. <laughs> Uh, it's funny, like, as soon as Beofish decides to do his, uh, his video on Greyface, I, all my Greyfaces are, are, like, gone. Um, no, no dogs, but, uh, I've seen some wolves. The blacksmith is offering a reward for a dog we saw on the road. I was hoping you'd seen it. Yes, I'll stay on the lookout. Keep your nose clean while you're here, outsider. Uh, Loki, no, I don't think that he would actually try to destroy the Thieves' Guild either. I think he would be of the mind of, uh, live and let live. He does not want to get involved in that stuff. He's not going to, um, go out of his way to lay down any kind of uh, self-imposed justice or anything. Uh, he's on his own journey. Um, he is not going to presume to uh, dictate the journey of others. And that kind of goes back to his teachings at the Gautfang Temple back in elsewhere. The Gautfang uh, martial art is all about uh, personal journeys. And uh, they believe that everybody's journey to mastery of the martial art and, you know, to mastery of life itself uh, is different and unique. And a big part of that journey is to find your own path. So he doesn't really judge uh, others' paths. Um, it's unique and different from his, but that does not make it better or worse in any way, I think. Hey, what? I didn't mean nothing by it. In fact, coming from elsewhere, um, I think he has a bit of respect, at least for the skill involved in being a thief. Um, like I said, he's going to be doing some pickpocketing, <clears throat> not for personal gain, just for, you know, combat reasons. Uh, maybe later, young one. Um, so I don't, I don't think he would go out of his way to, to harm the Thieves' Guilds at all, especially because he would probably have a lot of respect for a lot of its members. Um, same with the Dark Brotherhood. Uh, he feels that everybody has their lot. Um, and in fact, he might think that the Dark Brotherhood is just 
you know, a pack of predators like any other predator uh, hunting its prey. There is a need for those predators in any ecosystem, uh, including civilized society. Um, and he doesn't presume to know the answers to all these complicated questions and, and things like that, but uh, um, he's content, like I said, just to kind of live and let live, I think. Hey, the wind is here. Good morning, wind. Oh no, now another one wants to make out with this Khajiit. Everybody wants to make out with Jagasta. This one does not understand it. Um, okay, so Henrietta here, she is uh, overhauled by R.S. Children, or R.S. Children, R.S. Children. Um, they all look great, but for some reason her hair has some kind of weird uh, lighting thing going on. It's it uh, some kind of... It looks like a completely different color from here, but when the lighting bounces off of it, it looks almost like white. Like it's glowing. She must be using some uh, crazy conditioner that doesn't even exist in modern times to create that sheen on her hair. I don't know, what do you think? Troll fat? Something like that? Okay, so we are looking for a guy named Marcus. Hello, are you Marcus? Both are everywhere. I was Yarl once, but I was encouraged to step down when I took sides with the store cloaks. Mm. It was an imperial plot, I tell you. This one is not going to take sides politically. I am on my own journey, and uh, you do not sound like the person I am looking for. Mind what you say. The Empire has ears all over this town. The Bard? No. I think that this person would recognize Jagasta, seeing as how he sent a letter to us directly and specifically. He would know what he's looking for, so... Welcome to Dead Man's Drink. I escaped fighting in Cyrodiil, only to have it track me down again in Skyrim. Uh, let's see here. Um, yes, this one is looking for a man named Marcus Janus. Uh, have you had any news or visitors or anything of such a person? Here, take a look at this. Hmm. You hear any juicy gossip? Warning to travelers. There have been some rumors of a former blade living in a camp near Peak Shade Tower. Recent reports have also told of Thalmor Justiciers slaughtered on the road to Falkreath. Anyone traveling near the old tower should proceed with caution. Okay, that's uh, that's the other former blade, uh, Khajiit. Don't remember her name. But that's not who we're looking for. Ah. Dragon. I always heard the legends in my childhood. Hmm. Dragonborn? I do not know what you are talking about. True. So this might be a little bit. We're going to have to roleplay around the whole Dragonborn thing. Uh, the one complaint that I have about Helgen Reborn <clears throat> is that it's very heavy-handed with the Dragonborn stuff. So... A note with actual words. Ooh, yeah. So in your game, The Wind, do you have like any notes that have words on the uh, have words on them at all or are they all blank um are you Marcus Janus I hear you are looking for this one oh bless the divines you came well met hmm. welcome we have much to discuss will you tell me what happened at Helgen Yeah, so we're going to have to roleplay past this stuff because Jagasta is not Dragonborn, although we do have dragons in the game. <clears throat> um, so we can use that. Uh, we do not absorb dragon souls. So as long as we can get around the whole souls part, <clears throat> uh, Jagasta has helped uh, take down, I want to say, three dragons maybe? That should earn him some renown. 
people may start calling him Dragonborn as like a nickname, even though he technically isn't. So I don't. We can play that angle for a little bit, see how it works. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was fairly common knowledge that Helgen was attacked by a dragon. Uh, have you not seen them? No. <coughs> well, um, if a dragon d did decide to take down the city and they were not able to fight it off, then uh, the place was probably laid to waste. Wow, this guy's a real Debbie Downer. <laughs> Not Marcus, but uh, Jagasta. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but... Um, I have heard that bandits have taken over the place as well, so... I wouldn't get your hopes up that your family has survived. Yes, I've heard the fort is full of them. But appearances can also be deceiving. If I'm right, these are no bandits at all. I have it on good authority there is a man known only as Val. Inside. He's the leader of a small group Val Venus from the WWE. For lack of that term. The they're WWF at that point. Wherever they're found. That they've come out of hiding is beyond mysterious. He's they're just down in the dungeons flexing in a mirror uh, somewhere. Resistance movements, if you will. Insurrectionists. Against the Dalmor? And you know this man? His name is Valerius Tiberius Artorian. We served for many years together in the Imperial Legion, as captains under Titus Mead II during the Great War. He was a good man in those days, an honorable man. Then the Altmarian baby and murdered his wife, son, and daughter in cold blood. <clears throat> hmm. They murdered his family. Uh, this is not the first time I have heard such stories about the Dalmor. They marched them down the streets of the Imperial City and tortured them until they were dead. How could you not love that guy? That's what he did. Is he made people love him Let it be with known his pecs. That any family members of Imperial officers found anywhere else in the province would receive a similar fate. There were many such atrocities committed by those wretched maggots within those walls. And even more unspeakable tragedies in the rest of Syria. We were under orders to flee the city for Skyrim when they invaded. We left our people, our families, defenses. Most did not survive. The few that did make it out of there were scattered as refugees throughout the rest of the province. The plan was to regroup here in Skyrim, rest and resupply our forces, and return to the Imperial City to retake it. That's a cost of you. Surely you know this. If not, this book will help you understand a little of what we need. So then what happened to the city? When we finally returned to the city, there wasn't much left. We split our forces, and I led the charge from the southern waterfront district, while Valerius attacked from the west. March right down to the main gate and knock on the door, he says. Man had guts, that's for sure. After we retook the city, he started to change. He knew his family was gone. When he learned that they were tortured in the streets, he went mad and vowed to avenge their deaths. He started conducting covert operations that were unknown even to me, his closest friend. He took a handful of his most loyal men and began assassinating Aldmeri officers and diplomats, wherever he could find them. Of course, all of this was without knowledge or consent from our commanders. When they were caught, well, let's just say justice was swift. But the Aldmeri feared making a martyr out of him, as they knew the people were aware of his family's torture and murder. Hmm. <clears throat> So then they did not execute him. I have heard of such atrocities committed by the Dalmor, but this one does not have a stake in the fight. I do not have any personal vendetta against the Dalmor. I hope you are not 
hoping that I will join the fight against them. I am on my own journey, sorry to say. But, um... Obviously, they didn't execute him if they were not trying to make a martyr out of him, yes? No, but under pressure from the Thalmor, Titus locked him and his men away in the Imperial prison for the rest of their lives. Soon after, I decided my service had come to its end, and retired. But you don't get to be a captain and not accumulate a few favors. Hmm. Okay, so I am guessing you helped him escape. Um, I'm sorry, as I said, I uh, do not have a stake in this civil war fight here, or the Dalmor, or the Imperial Legion, or anything. <clears throat> so what exactly do you want from this one? I need you to go try and talk to Valerius. Reason with him. Tell him Marcus Janus requests a meeting with him. Tell him I'll come to the fort alone. Present company excluded, of course. Give this ring to him. It was his wife's wedding. If any of his men try to accost you, show it to them and tell them it is a gesture of goodwill for me. They'll give you quarter if they know I sent you. Approach the guards and show them the ring. Tell them Marcus Janus sent you to see Valerius Tiberius Artorio on urgent business. This is too many names to remember. But tell them it's for Valerius. His eyes only. Please return to me as soon as you can. I'll prepare to leave and be ready to go when you return. Make haste. And may fortune favor the foolish. Okay. So, as I said, this quest mod can get a little heavy-handed with the lore and making you pick sides and, and all that. Uh, but there are always ways to roleplay around something that you actually do want to do, even if it doesn't fit in with uh, with your character or the story that you have going. Um, for example, I played a Thalmor agent. Uh, well, not a Thalmor agent, more of a, a Thalmor uh, captain in the military. Um, that wanted to play through this quest, but instead of the uh, the Thalmor prison that you have to infiltrate later on. Uh, it wasn't an official Thalmor prison. It was more of a splinter a splinter group off of the Thalmor that had become more extremist uh, with their views. Um, the player character that I had uh, set up. Ooh, I just got a. <laughs> Uh, somebody's ringing the doorbell. I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. So yeah, sorry folks, uh, we got uh, landscapers right next door who are trimming a palm tree right above my wife's car, so I gotta go move her car. <laughs> uh, I'll be back in like five minutes, if even that.
And we're back. Sorry if you can... Yeah, right? The doorbell rang. Mr. Gusto was at the indoor. Um, yeah, sorry if you can hear their equipment outside, too. Uh, it's quite loud. Catching up on chat. Yeah, also funny how the doorbell sounds like a dog barking, right? Yeah, no, that's that's a feature I have of my current dog is that every time the doorbell rings, uh, she barks. Had to pay extra for that. Okay, I have no idea what I was talking about. Oh yeah, role playing. Uh, so I did play a Thalmor. Um, Soldier, <laughs> uh, and I role played this Thalmor prison where you had to break out uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger guy. Uh, I role played that whole thing as a Thalmor splinter cell uh, that was very extremist in their views and had become sort of a terrorist organization that we had to take care of. Um, in that playthrough, the Thalmor were more of a, a unifying force, kind of like an elven. Um, Empire. Uh, they're trying to get everybody under the rule of one um, one governing force to kind of force peace that way. Um, so that's how I role played that. Uh, in this situation, uh, I'm thinking that Marcus says that there's this man named uh, Val, whatever, whatever, uh, in Helgen. Posing as a bandit. I think how we're going to play this is that this man has kind of taken a dark turn in his pursuit of justice. And Marcus is sending Jagasta to kind of bring him back to the light and do some good with, uh, with the uh, ambition, the drive that he has for justice. So that's what Jagasta is doing. He's finding this guy who has kind of resorted to terror... Um, in pursuit of his twisted uh, view of justice for the terrible things that the Thalmor did to his family. And uh, I think he is going to um, be very interested in, in trying to turn this guy around, uh, guide him on a better path. Even though, you know, like I just said, everybody's on their own path in the Gout Fang, um, Marcus has convinced Jagasta that this is a good man capable of great things. Uh, and then just with a little bit of nudge in the right direction, um, he could be persuaded to uh, hop back on the path that he was meant to be on from the very beginning. Um, okay, how are we doing encumbrance-wise? Better than we have been. Uh, I don't think I have anything that I need to sell off here. Just some of the arrows from uh, Amelie and uh, Eric are two young fledgling adventurers yeah probably I think one day will come though where you will want to settle down young one um okay so let's just take the opportunity here to explore this place a little bit uh, so Helgen It's not too far over to the east here, so we will head off there soon. Um, we'll probably hunker down in Falkreath for the night, though. It's already pretty late in the evening. Uh, we'll wait for, hopefully, sunlight in the morning. Uh, we may not actually get there, uh, because Falkreath is, when it's not raining, it's very overcast and foggy most of the time. But... We'll go ahead and explore the city anyway for the rest of the evening here. I am running the Great Holds uh, Minor Cities, or the Great Cities Minor Holds mod. Some combination of those words. <laughs> uh, and it does a great job of overhauling Falkreath here. Uh, it greatly expanded the cemetery out here. Oh, here's one of the interesting NPCs. Uh, you're supposed to cough into your elbow. The hand isn't going to do much. 
Uh, anyway, are you alright? That's a question I've asked myself for weeks now. Am I alright? Will she be alright? Was it wrong to come here? Speaking of Debbie Downers... Uh, okay. So, what's wrong? I'm sick. I mean, it would be fine if it was just a cough, but... Well, my body hurts so much I can barely walk. And those are the good days. Hmm. So, I know a priestess in Whiterun by the name of Danaga. She is a master of restoration magics. Maybe she can help you. I've already tried. I'd heard that... Definitely should be wearing a mask, William. She's powerful healer in all of Skyrim, but she couldn't help me. I know now it's my destiny to die. That's why Archaea guided us here. Hmm. This one does not think that you should leave your path up to the gods. It is one's own responsibility to find their own path in life. always as strong as it is now. In fact, I almost gave up on the divines altogether. So you are staying here in Falkreath for the time being? Yes, I plan to stay here with my daughter until Arcade and leave. I've already arranged for a plot of land away from the trees where the stone face sees. It sounds like a wonderful spot. Thank you. It's funny, when they told me about the Grand Cemetery at Falkry, I was so worried it might be too large. I feared Henrietta wouldn't be able to find my headstone. But when we got here, I was relieved. The graveyard is so cozy, and the priest is a kind man. So you sound ready to make the journey to the Sands Beyond the Moons. I am. I was afraid to die before, not knowing what would become of my daughter. I thought she would end up lost and alone, a child few people noticed and nobody wanted. Now my heart is filled with more trivial concerns, and I often forget how lucky I am to have them. Hmm, so the young girl who runs around here is your daughter? Henrietta, my baby girl. Bright, talented, and just enough of her father's courage to be brave without... It's like Eric's going face. in for a big hug. She complains a lot, too, but I forgive her. She must get that... Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, okay, this one is going to bite his tongue. Uh, you have enough to deal with. Uh, nice to meet you. All right, then. Oh, is this a funeral? May the spirit of Lavinia and all those who have left this world and its suffering know the beloved serenity of the king. And may he one day rejoin them in eternity. Mm. This is a different take, uh, this archaic, than what the Khajiit believe in. This archaic is meant to guide lost souls to the afterlife, yes? Well, that is what Canarthi is for in our religion. Um, but anyway, if it, as long as it brings these people peace, <clears throat> I will not. Uh, I will not call it out as wrong. Boost, this is the number of graves in this cemetery never decreases. Well, that is the way of things. Yes. Um, so you are a priest of Arke, yes? I am came into Arche's light after the Great War. 
So many died by my hands. My magics. Yeah, it is dark, and um, the YouTube encoding doesn't really do anything to help it. Could you do an old elf a favor? I misplaced my journal in a cave I was exploring. I'll pay for its return. Hmm. Yes, maybe I can do that for you. Blessing of our Katie for your help. Moss Mother Cavern. Okay. So that will allow us to uh, multitask a little bit because there's some other stuff going on in Moss Mother Tower as well. Oh, by the way, this weather is terrible. Is it always like this? It can't be helped. I suppose not. Um, let's see. Do we have any training? We do use some conjuration. Uh, we don't have any training points we can use. Okay. Yes, yes. This one will find it for you. You've only been at it for like three days, Eric. Give it some time. You've not properly been tested yet. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is the Great City's overhaul of Falkreath, and as you can tell, it has added a lot to the cemetery here. Uh, still fairly cozy, so it fits the description from, uh, what's her name? Uh, not huge, not grand, like some of the, uh, some of the lore surrounding the Falkreath Cemetery. But definitely bigger than it was. You know, uh, half a dozen so, or a dozen uh, plots here and there. I think this one actually does have a crypt that you can go into. Uh, I don't think Jagasta will. You know what? Maybe he would go in and just pay his respects a bit. Nice little overhaul. I, I like it a lot. There we go. Now we can see. Ooh, that one's almost too light. This one hopes he is not disrespecting anybody by walking through these crypts. This thing really is quite sprawling, though. I don't know if I've ever come down here and really explored. The dead seem to be staying dead, though, so... That's encouraging so far. Okay, the floor plan here seems pretty simple. There is a stairway down even further. Uh, let's take off the traveling equipment here for now. A little more comfortable without it. Do a quick save here just in case. Um, so the reason Jagasta's down here is, well, you know, he is naturally a bit of a curious kitty. Um, but even more so, he's curious about this RK situation because um, he does not have something... Well, he does have something like that. Kanarthi is sort of the RK for uh, the Kajiti Pantheon. <clears throat> but it is something that's quite different. Uh, so he's curious about it, just like he was about the Forsworn before uh, he got jaded on them. So at least the dead are staying dead, so this RK fella seems to be doing something right, at least. Although the state of these crypts could uh, they leave something to be desired. It's like they've had some collapses on some of the, the pillars here probably needs to be taken care of, although uh, Kust, the uh, the maintenance guy, 
for the cemetery seems to have his hands full as the only one who is uh, maintaining things. Um, also seems to be quite a few things to loot down here for an aspiring thief uh, slash grave robber. But that's not Jagasta. So yeah, when you count the crypt area down here underground, uh, it does seem a little closer to uh, the fanciful descriptions of the Falkreath Cemetery in terms of its, its vastness. So I think now we'll just acquaint ourselves with the different shopkeepers and stuff, just uh, just to get the lay of the land of the city here. Oh, now it's dark again. Night eye. Uh, you are the coost that the priest mentioned. Yes. This one does not bring war. <clears throat> Hopefully, just help. Okay, so this, these two are, uh, whoa. <laughs> a lot of countries live in this place. It's like exploring caves. Canarthi, now is not the time. Yeah, you are right, Amelie. Not much of a view with all these trees. And the fog. And the clouds. Really make visibility tough. Oh, we also got a letter from the Jarl himself um, asking for our specific assistance with something. So maybe we'll see what that's all about as well. <laughs> Idiot dragon killed himself by flying into a tree. Kind of like a bird, right? Flying into a window. Ooh, it's really dark in here too. Uh, hello, Yaro Sidgir. You sent a letter to me asking for my assistance, yes? Yes. What is it that you want? Definitely moving up in the world. Uh, this one received your letter. I am Jigasta, the Moon Puss. Ah, it's you. Yes, well, now we'll see if the stories about you are true. There's a group of bandits in my hold that I may have had a few discreet dealings with. The cut they were giving me was good at first. But now, now it's time to clean things up. Go and take care of it. Hmm. Um, I'm sorry, I am busy with other things right now that don't involve uh, shady business, so good day to you, Jarl Sidgir. Disappointing. Come and see me again sometime. I might have some use for you. Yeah, so obviously this guy's a sleaze bag. Uh, Jigasa's not going to give him the time of day. He has no political ambition, so he's not trying to make a name for himself, even though he has to this point, it seems. So he is not going to feel compelled to help a Jarl just because he asked for it. Um, though he might if he feels like it's a just and righteous cause. Not in this case, though. Someone new? Perhaps someone looking for me to mix something up for them? Don't I think I'm good on name, potions, Frank. but... I have plenty of reliable tonics and healing potions to sell. Just making introductions. Um, I've noticed there aren't many red guards in Skyrim. What brought you here? Well, my family back in Hammerfell didn't approve of my interest in lethal poisons and death in general, so I left and wandered north. When I found this town, with its huge cemetery, I felt right at home. I opened the shop, and I've never looked back. This is where I belong. So why name your store Grave Concoctions if you sell healing salves and poultices? 
I know, it's a bit strange. Not exactly a name to bring comfort to the sick and ailing who come to buy a poultice or salve. But what you must understand about Falku is that our town is defined, for better or worse, by the large and ancient cemetery here. That's why the inn is called Dead Man's Drink, the farm is called Corpse Light Farm, and so on. I suppose it's sort of a running joke. Well, at least you all have a sense of humor about it. Uh, thank you. That is all for it now. Good to meet you, Zarya. Mm -hmm. Uh, who's the one less Redguard? We'll just go explore over here and uh, Sadia. Okay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, she's being taken back to Hammerfell. At least that's what we've chosen to believe. Uh, I can still hear uh, See You Later groaning about it. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. I thought I saw a gray face bug there. Boy, oh, this looks like hard work. I can't believe we have provincials like this Okay. This one is racist, maybe, huh? We will give him a white birth. Ah, uh, perhaps I judge him too harshly. His province has been war-torn for some time now, and he blames it on people who are not from Skyrim. This is understandable, even if it is fundamentally wrong. Okay, so let's go ahead and just hunker down in the inn for a bit. Well, actually, we haven't checked out the general store either, so let's let's go ahead and do that. Got something for just about everybody in here. Give a holler if you have it. Yeah, the magic log pile. Well met. Unlike my brother, I've no dislike of strangers. Met lots of them while I was a stormcloak. Hmm. You mentioned a brother. Who is he? He wouldn't be the one tending to the the mill, would he? His name's Bolin. He's the one who works the lumber mill down by the river. Ah, uh, yes, we've met. If you meet him, don't expect much in the way of conversation. He ain't one for talking, especially with folk he don't know. So, you're a Stormcloak, then? I was once, but not anymore. I was wounded in a skirmish up near Windhelm. This was years ago, mind you. Now, maybe I don't pick up a blade in Ulfric's name no more, but I still hold with his ideals. Skyrim is Nordland. And we ought to rule it. We don't need no help from the Empire on that count. Okay, that is an understandable position, but um, one that I will stay out of, if you don't mind. Okay, that's it. Nice to meet you, Zorlov. Steal anything from my shop and you'll regret it. What, just because I am a Khajiit means I will steal something? Bah! I will say that my people have earned their reputation. So I will not judge him too harshly either. <laughs> okay, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some studying of some of our spells that we have. Um, one thing that I've been trying is to use spell research to um, learn the next level of the scale form spell from mysticism. So scale form is a spell that will improve your unarmed damage. There is, I think, uh, an adept level spell that uh, improves unarmed damage by 20, I think. Um, and I've been trying to learn it through spell research just by using the same archetypes uh, that are learned from Scaleform itself. Um, 
but I have not been able to successfully construct that spell yet. Uh, and I think at this point I am out of paper rolls. Yeah, I think it takes like three rolls of paper to create a thesis, or an adept level thesis anyway. And I only have the two. So, I'm going to spend the rest of the evening studying... Well, let's, let's see what we need help studying. Uh, destruction we could study. Alteration's already pretty good there. Illusion we don't use. Yeah, we'll go with destruction, I think. Fire bolt. And I think I just unequipped my fire bolts. There we go. Uh, okay, what time is it now? 6.43. So I think we can study for three hours, and then we'll hit the hay, and we'll head over to... Helgen, maybe? Or should we go do the Moss Mother stuff first? Let's do the Moss Mother stuff first. Okay, and we'll stop our studying, we'll get some rest. I think we're probably hungry and thirsty here too. Mentally exhausted by 60 points, uh, mild hunger and moderate thirst. So we can take care of that. Ooh, we're out of mead, we're gonna have to buy some more. Have plenty of money though, so not to worry. Was a doorbell again. <laughs> no, no doorbell, doorbell, just the dog barking at. The, whoa. Nari is uh, really up in the grill here. Okay. Drink for the thirsty, food for the hungry. See if we can get some cheap mead here. Ooh, hunting brew. She's got the good stuff. We'll buy a couple bottles. And I would like a room for the evening if you don't mind. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Yes. Uh, and I've never been here before. Can you show me where the room is, please? Of course. I'll show you to your room. Right this way. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Uh, thank you, ma'am. You are really excited for me to go to sleep. What are you going to do to me while I'm asleep? Are you going to play with my tail? Yes? Don't worry about me. I don't need a break. I don't need you to worry about you. I need you to worry about me. If that man standing on the chair tries to play with my tail while I'm sleeping, I want you to cut him, okay? Cut him deep. Eric is too young and innocent. I don't want to subject him to such work. Oh, there is all kinds of debauchery going on in my room. I paid good money for this room. And we have male-on-male face-sitting going on. I didn't know this was the kind of establishment you were running here. Who can sleep with this going on in the room? Well, I'm glad you're having such a good time. Ugh. Okay. I will let you two finish as I listen to the bard, I suppose.
No playing with the Gijit's tail. Okay. Did you two get it out of your system? Yes? Alright. I have a bodyguard watching me while I sleep, so... No funny business, yes? Good day, friend. Keeping well? Yes, thank you for watching over me as I sleep. These two are up to no good. Okay, let's... Uh, let's see, we'll have a sweet roll. We'll carb up for the adventures ahead. Too early for mead, so we're just going to get some water. Get that filled back up. We'll head off to Moss Mother, I think. Oh yeah, there was some serious debauchery going on in there. Hopefully they got it out of their system. Uh, that furniture is going to need to be severely disinfected as well before Jagasta goes back in there. <laughs> okay, so the weather lightened up. That's good. It's good to feel the sun on the fur, that's for sure. Um, okay, so we have a bit of a hike to make it up to Moss Mother Cavern. Uh, before we go, though, I want to get the, the quest for the missing hunters. Come on in. We'll knock out two birds with one stone there. I escaped fighting in Cyrodiil, only to have it track me down again in Skyrim. Here, take a look at this. Have you seen that shrine of a sort? Folks have gone missing the past few years. Here we go. Word now is that our hunters are gone too. Say, if you're traveling, could you keep an eye out for them? Valder and his men, I think they were after Bear up north. Of course, I happen to be going up that way anyway, so I will keep an eye out for them. Thank you. Perhaps we avoid the Thalmor for now. Uh, seeing as how we have been associating with Marcus Janus, and he is a... Well, I don't know how much it is known, but he is an enemy of the Thalmor. We will avoid trouble if we can, yes? Okay, so I need to about-face and follow the road to the right, and then the left, and then it's right off the road to the left. About-face. Uh, travel equipment. Engage. So, I know it's been a lot of traveling and talking up to this point, but we should get some action here in Moss Mother, I think. Chance to test our martial arts prowess. Flora is thick in Falkreath, but at least we have a nice sunny day for now anyway. Knock on wood. Come along, no more stops. We need to find our way to solitude. Why are we even going to a wedding at this far-flung end of the Empire anyway? I told you, it's the wedding of Vittoria Vici, an extremely well-connected merchant with the East Empire. Emperor's cousin, remember? Hopefully these gifts will put us in her good graces, secure that import deal. Mm. This one thinks they need a new guide to solitude. Uh, I don't think this Imperial soldier knows where he is going. Oh well. They will figure it out eventually, I think.
So I've been playing my Ashlander concept quite a bit. And I must say that it's... Uh, well, what happened? Did I miss something? Uh, I think maybe uh, I drew some aggro from maybe some bandits up in that tower there, but they seem to have let it go. Uh, yeah, I've been playing my Ashlander concept. Um, and it's... Ooh, who is this? Save. Is this a thief? All right. Hand over your valuables, or I will gut you like a fish. Hmm. You should walk out away right, right now. Nice try, but you do not scare me. Hmm. I am not going to ask again. Fine, here, just take it. Leave me alone. Ha, what a coward. Didn't even put up a proper fight. Just because one does not want to fight does not make them a coward. I would rather you take my money than be dead. How about that? Although the next time he attempts to waylay a party of three warriors, he may not be so lucky to find someone as forgiving as these ones. He will learn his lesson eventually. This one needs something? Yes, I need you to learn your lesson. Oh, well, this seems like a nice little mill. Nice setup you have here. A guest? Oh, oh your eyes. Um, I will leave you to your work, yes? All right, then. Something off about her eyes. Um, let's not help her with the farm work anymore. Let's tend to our own issues, yes? Moss Mother Cavern. All right, so it should be up here to the left somewhere. We'll look for some standing stones that mark the way. And I'm really wondering how well Jigasta is going to be able to handle this challenge. Spriggans can be a tall order for many. Mostly in terms of that ranged uh, damage that they do. Does anyone live here? A hunter's rest? What a great idea! We should build an adventurer's rest. The sanctuary for all those who crave adventure and have bad knees. Have <laughs> bad knees. Oh, there is somebody leaving here. Okay, we will let them be. I will tell you, it's really hard to leave that red glowing book alone, but I really don't think role-playing wise Jagasta would impose to walk right through uh, a bedroll of two different hunters and uh, read their book as they sleep. Please, do you have a potion you can spare? Hmm. Thank Kinnereth for you, stranger. This one may have a spell that he can use. Uh, what are you doing out here? We tracked a bear to this den. Good coin for those pelts. We had the big sow cornered when they showed up. Three of them, out of nowhere. Spriggins. Niels went down before we even knew to run. Ari died just inside. I never even thought the things were real. I may have lost a drop or two of blood. Truth is, I'm not going anywhere like this. Ah, uh, hurts to breathe. Oh, what is Eric doing down there? Eric! 
Hmm. Eric is very empathetic. <laughs> He'll be okay, Eric. Get up. Um, maybe I know a spell that would work. Let me check. Thank you. Please hurry. Do we have healing hands? Yes, we do. Excellent. Much better. Thanks, friend. I wouldn't have lasted much longer without that. But now what? I can't just walk away. Not with my friend's bodies in there being torn apart by those beasts. Um, listen, don't be foolish. They already tore you to shreds. Uh, we are three well-equipped and able warriors. We will take care of this for you, yes? You'd really risk your life for a stranger's honor? I don't even know what to say. Hello, Hotch. I'll wait here. Good to see you drop in. And I'm also very jealous of everybody's ice cream. And also, speaking of Mr. Miyagi, Cobra Kai is awesome. I've been watching that on Netflix. Uh, I guess Netflix uh, bought it from YouTube. It is no longer a YouTube exclusive. Uh, and it's very awesome. If you have any love for martial arts movie or the uh, old 80s movies, all Rasharito of the Doritos made it as well. Now I want Doritos and ice cream. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, yeah, Cobra Kai is awesome. You should watch it. Okay, so I gotta get my uh, block stance ready to go. All right. We may or may not have a death alternative situation coming up very soon. Let's see. We have to face down a bear first. And then probably a couple Spriggans. I don't know if it's better or worse. Oh no, there's the Spriggan right there. Okay. Try to let our fledgling adventures tank for us. Oh, that's a Matron. That's going to be tough. Uh, let's get some more help here. Oh, I just ran into a trap. Uh, seriously? Targeting me? Are you being pounded on by three of my minions? Alright. Let's get in there. Help them out. Yeah, did not seem to care about my meat shields whatsoever. Interesting alchemical ingredients. Maybe we can make some healing potions or something with that. Mr. Miyagi. Rest in peace. <laughs> uh, yeah, Cobra Kai is a very nice homage to uh, the original Karate Kid movies. Not, uh, not any of the newer ones so much. Which is okay by me. The originals were always better, in my opinion. Oof. Okay. A little sloppy, but still going well. Uh, I am still playing on legendary difficulty. As you can tell, the damage that everybody does is quite harsh. Five, nine. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh our spectral wolf here. And maybe a ward will help us take on these matrons, especially with that ranged magic damage that they do. Another matron. Okay. 
So, Divine Armor leveled up. That's good. We'll go check that out in the Forgotten Magic menu. Um, so that's one thing about the Ritual Stone, is that when there seems to be a Spriggan nearby, and we resurrect, uh, or not resurrect, but summon uh, the spirit of like a bear or a wolf or something like that, uh, it seems to turn against us. Which is not great, but makes a certain amount of sense, I think. Maybe. Just keep spraying my ward there while everybody else goes after you. That would be great. Okay, so we cleared the threat. Excellent. I wonder if uh, a mod like one with nature would override that. I think it does, based on my experience. That's a nice bow. And here's the journal that Runil was looking for. Excellent. Uh, yeah, let's see. Maybe we should give you guys some torches. over there triggering traps. Uh, let's see. We need to trade some things. Certainly. I'll take any necklaces if you have them. The soldier of Tabella must always look her best. I don't think you're going to do any better than that uh, amulet of Tabella, though. And why do you have two of them? Anyway, I don't know. Uh, let's see. You need a torch so that you can see. Uh, this one for Gitz that... Uh, not everyone can see in the dark as well as a Khajiit. Divines bless us with their beauty. It just feels right somehow. Having this new life is an event. No problem? How can I help? That's it. I'm gonna have to get some ice cream tonight. My wife is visiting family back in uh, northeastern mm -hmm. Pennsylvania back in uh, Magus's neck of the woods, actually, and she keeps sending me pictures of all this glorious, terrible food that she's been eating, and I'm, like, really jealous trying to stay, like, healthy over here. That was a bad idea. Who needs to eat healthy when there's pizza and ice cream to be had? One mod I think I need to get and add to my load order is uh, the Unique Uniques. It's done, then. That's usually something that I get for Look, I want most of my load orders, and uh, my more modern ones do not have it. I'd like to integrate that, I think. So Valder's Lucky Dagger is unique with that mod, in terms of its model. I am running uh, Zim's Immersive Artifacts, and I think that that mod touches uh, Valder's Lucky Dagger here. 25% chance of a critical hit. No, I think that's pretty vanilla, isn't it? Don't give in. <laughs> well, I've been good all week, actually. I've been eating very clean, very healthy. Uh, so I'm due for a cheat day, and I think I would love some pizza today. I might order one up. My wife's actually not helping either. She's sending me pictures of all this glorious food she's been eating, and uh, since she misses me, she's been offering to order, like, <laughs> matching food for me uh, in terms of, like, pizza and stuff. Now, we don't have the same kind of pizza here that they have in northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not running Legacy. Uh, Magus. That's a big mod that I have not integrated. Um, 
and it, it's kind of daunting. Maybe maybe I'll try on a test profile somewhere. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, the pizza that they have up there uh, is not the same as the pizza that we have down here. So, uh, although I can fill myself up on pizza that is delicious, it's uh, it's definitely not Old Forge pizza. That's a very unique thing in the world. Uh, yeah, I fast traveled. Not very immersive, but um, I really didn't want to have to truck all the way down that same path that we just traveled by. With nothing changing. That's one concession I'll make with the roleplay and the, the immersion and fast travel is that if they have me going back and forth uh, over the same roads, I'll just go ahead and do the fast travel. People in the know know of pizzas. Yeah, the old forage pizza. Something special. Um, there are reasons why it is so unique up there, too. Um, the altitude, moisture in the air, and the water quality in that area uh, all make it so that that crust can't really be replicated anywhere else exactly the same anyway so if you're ever in that part of the country that part of the world you gotta check out the pizza you owe it to yourself um alright what are we doing we gotta find Runil and return his journal but I think the missing hunter took care of itself and then it's early enough in the day that we can we can begin our journey to Helgen kick off that quest line Okay, is Runil tending the graves out here? No, there's Kust. He must be inside. Uh, yeah, similar, the wind. Uh, I've actually had the sourdough in San Francisco as well, and uh, yeah. Different parts of the world have different specialties and different unique cuisine that is always worth checking out. Seafood in Seattle is excellent. Uh, same with New York. It's all extremely fresh. You can eat it right on the bay. Thank you. It's a collection of regrets that I try not to... Mexican food here in Arizona really can't be beat. I promise you this. Although it can be replicated in other areas, it's just... Uh, it's not a thing with uh, altitude, air quality, or, or water quality. Life is far too short. It's more just uh, the people that we've had that moved to this area. They know that uh, secret Mexican food magic. Basically just cook everything on the same hot plate. <laughs> Add lots of lard. And you come up with something quite magical. Oh yeah, uh, I've heard some rumors or reports on rumors that uh, the Vampire Masquerade game is is having some development difficulty. Probably just because we have not heard from them in quite some time. Now what do we have in terms... Uh, let's see, we have some stuff that we could sell. Let's head into the Jarl's Longhouse here and see if... I think they have an enchanting table here that we can use. Alright, now the wind makes me want some fresh baked sourdough as well. So I'm going to need to eat pizza, ice cream, and sourdough bread. If I can find a decent bakery around. Uh, it's been pushed back already, they've already announced that. Okay, nothing we can disenchant, so we can just sell off everything that we have and head to Helgen. Yeah, I have family in Seattle. Uh, my brother was stationed just outside of Seattle uh, with the Navy. And I've gone up to visit on several occasions. 
not with the current state of the pandemic. I just really don't want to get on a plane if I don't have to. I don't want to spread anything to family. Try not to judge Valkreath too harshly, visitor. I'm reasonably fit and healthy. I probably would be okay if I caught anything, but I'd feel terrible if I spread it to somebody else. Um, okay, let's uh, sell this stuff out. Oh, hello there. What can I do for you? Blades, gauntlets, I can forge anything you need. I don't think she's actually a, uh, a blacksmith, or a vendor, is she? Uh, I will say that I'm a bit of a sucker for uh, a woman with this kind of accent. <laughs> so I've always been drawn to this, uh, to this NPC. Um, I don't think Jigasa is the type to flirt. Uh, you look quite young to be a blacksmith. Uh, you must be good at your craft, yes? I'm Lord's apprentice, although I've been his for less than a season. Before that, I was with Adriana Benici in Whiterun. And before that, Baron in solitude. Uh, why all the different stops? I'm on a sort of pilgrimage. When I'm finished... Yeah, I'm Loki, I think unfortunately you just city. it doesn't really matter your age or your uh, name's Isabel, by the way. health or fitness That's levels. I mean, too. if you're younger and fit and healthy, then you're probably going to be fine with it. Um, but there are some people in that demographic that have a really hard time with it. Uh, my brother in Seattle actually uh, was presumptive positive. He didn't actually get tested, but he is, you know, mid-30s, uh, young, healthy, um, and he said he had a really hard time with it. So you just, you just a crapshoot. You just don't know. Oh, I guess she is a vendor. What do you have for sale? How can I help you? Interesting. Most accents sound sexy? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I have to agree with you. I mean, yeah, I, I can't think of one right now that that's off-putting. Uh, maybe the the southern accent. <laughs> we get enough of that out here that uh doesn't really appeal to me, but I can see how some people would like it. We couldn't disenchant Valder's lucky dagger, and, you know, being unarmed anyway probably wouldn't help us out much. Yeah, Irish, Scottish accents on women. Quite attractive. Gotta say. Um, I am also quite a fan of the domestic product, though. I, uh... I married uh, a born American gal. Now, Scranton area does have its own accent, which uh, <laughs> uh, can be less than attractive at times. But, uh, you know, with the right person, it definitely has its charm. Uh, I'm really torn on whether or not to to sell off Valder's Lucky Dagger. It, it doesn't cause much encumbrance so we'll probably hold on to it maybe we'll we'll find somebody who can make use of it um but let's see does she have anything in terms of enchantments that we might be able to use later on let's see we're not much of a fear monger we're not going to cause anybody to run away archery is useless for us No, Magus, actually your accent is not, uh, I, you hear it in the, um, the short O sounds, like, uh, eggnog, the rest of the country says eggnog, the same as dog and hog, uh, a lot of the Scrantonians say it's more of a short A sound, uh, so they'll, like, my wife, I'm like, uh, we saw a shirt that said, don't hog the nog. And she's like, that doesn't rhyme. Hog and nag. Egg nag. Doesn't rhyme with hog. And I'm like, oh my god. You are from Scranton, aren't you? Did you see a hound on the road? Fine, strong creature. Yeah, egg nag. Exactly. So that's when you hear it the most. But they do have their own, like, dialect. 
uh, as well. So, uh, uh, G. <laughs> That's a big one. Uh, Heina. Heina or Na. That's another one. I think we've actually had this conversation before. That's something uh, Scranton, Northeast Pennsylvania. Uh, nobody else in the world says that. They make up their own words. The pizza dialect. It's not a pizza. It's a tray. Um, cheese pizza is a plain pizza up there. You try to order a plain pizza over here, you're going to get something with just crust and sauce. You order a tray of pizza, you're going to get the metal tray that it comes on. <laughs> not the pizza itself. Different world over there. They live in a bubble, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, the guard mentioned a dog. I asked the gate guards to look for him. I can't afford to chase him down, but could use a fierce, loyal beast to keep me company. If you were willing to retrieve him for me, I'd give you some fresh meat to attract him out on the road. Yeah, physically you're going to sound different to yourself. That's a good point, Beofish. So when you hear a recording of your own voice, uh, the recording is going to do, like, depending on the microphone and the different settings that you have on your software um, and your microphone itself, you probably will physically sound different uh, in that recording. But yeah, you definitely sound different in your own head when you hear yourself talk than you do from any kind of record recording. You do get over it. it it's a bit of a self-conscious thing at first, but you, you get over it eventually. Uh, sure, maybe I will try to catch him for you. Uh, companionship is always a good thing. Good. There's some gold in it for you if you succeed. Here's the meat. Check the road just outside of town. Oh, Beofish, now that you're here, I can kind of demonstrate what I was talking about with the block canceling. Uh, I did do some testing on it last night and it uh, actually isn't as bad as I thought. I'm going to do a quick save here. I'm going to add... a spear. Okay, so say with like um, a woodcutter's axe here, vanilla animations, with TK Dodge you can cancel the animation into a block. That's a feature of TK Dodge. Uh, you can do it with both regular attacks and power attacks. Ooh. There we go. I guess ew, it's it's funky with the with the power attacks. Usually it's very consistent with uh, vanilla with vanilla animations. But now it doesn't seem to be working for me. Okay. Well, maybe we'll do a whole never mind on that. <laughs> Let's see maybe with the with a knife. Yeah, so if you catch it early enough in the power attack animation, you can cancel into a block there, too. Um, oh, and now we're getting vanilla animation somehow. Oh, animated armory. Worth all the little bugs and nuances for sure, but uh, can be a bit of a buggy little mess. Hey, Simpa's here. No problem. Oh, and I see Hawkeye dropped in too. Welcome, folks. Okay, well, we're bugged. I wonder if it's like that for... Other weapons too. Hmm. Let's reload the save and see if it, if it fixes it. Oh, okay. So yeah, I was doing some testing with it, and I am able to um, 
cancel regular attacks uh, with the new animations into a block. Uh, it doesn't seem to be as responsive as the uh, vanilla animations, but um, a power attack seems to be extremely hard, uh, explain, extremely difficult to, to cancel with a block. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. And it could just be because that window, the cancel window. Oh, I didn't actually uh, grab the spear out of there, did I? Is, is the cancel window is so short? Yeah, yeah, it's not working. Uh, anyway, yeah, I messed with it a little bit. It just seems to be the uh, the power attack doesn't seem to be cancelable with the animated armory. But if it's a whole different ball of wax, uh, a new thing, uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, I was able to, like I said, cancel uh, regular attacks. Didn't seem as responsive as the vanilla uh, animations. But uh, I did get it working, so not as huge of a priority as it once was. I just think... Um, in general, the scripted nature of animated armory makes it feel a little mushier than than the vanilla animations do, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, I'm good with just letting that one go. I'll post about it on Discord, too, so that uh, you don't spend too much time on it. And yeah, I don't know anything about the behavior files either, and I know that animated armory is... Um, very heavily reliant on those and, and scripts and everything like that. And as such, tends to be a little bit buggy and a little bit less responsive than the built-in weapon system. But it's worth it for the di diversity, in my opinion. Yeah, no problem. No, no rush or anything. Do what you need to do. I know you got a lot of projects and stuff going on, but... I would like to know more about them at some point. Oh, the other thing about um, uh, animated armory that I would like to figure out at some point is the draw animations. Um, so I, I have just standard uh, uh, sheath positions uh, at the moment, but say if you have like a short spear or a rapier and you have a swords on back sheath position, um, if you try to draw that rapier or that short spear, it's going to use the vanilla, uh, hip location for the draw animation, um, even though the weapon is positioned on the back. Okay, are we heading in the right direction here? I don't think Jigasta would be overly interested in this uh, uh, Blades agent. Looks like the Thalmor have uh, cleared out this bandit encampment for us. Ooh. All right. I thought that they had triggered the... Uh, the trap already, but apparently they had not fully triggered it. I do want to check the bandit corpses, though, for forgotten magic tomes. There's a lot of spells that I am still looking to adding to this character, especially in terms of the pyromancy stuff. Oh, there's a spider. You picked a bad time to get lost, friend. You're going to look good now that I'm my wall. So I do want to make it a point of um, finding as many uh, forgotten magic spell tomes as possible. Oh, I was going the wrong way there a little bit. And the forgotten magic spell tomes appear on the corpses of enemies. Are these Darit arrows? That's what I use for Amelie. And I think it was just the two of them up here. I'll take the lockpick. 
uh, Phoenix Strike, uh, some of the, you know, the basic Fire Blast stuff. I do want to take on more uh, Destruction Magic with this character. I think it fits in terms of, like, Key Blasts and stuff like that. I think he would be able to focus his internal key into uh, some kind of fire attacks and things like that. Seems like a monkish thing to do. Yeah, I think this is, uh, Magus, this is just a case of the draw animations for animated armory just defaulting to the vanilla ones. I just need to find where that draw animation is uh, and replace the, the animation file, I think, uh, unless it's more complicated than that with the behavior files and stuff like that. But that is something I would like to fix at some point. Because I do have some, some profiles. We'll do a quick save here. I do have some profiles that make use of sheaths on the back and uh, the, the back dagger sheath positions and things like that. Well, that wasn't glowing, but okay, we'll take it. I think this is one of two different locations that I know of off the top of my head that triggers uh, bandits to spawn when you unlock the chest. Hail, Dragonborn. Although I don't see them at this point. Is that them? That might be them. Nope, that's the Thalmor patrol. Okay. Looks like we lucked out. Yes, exactly, a Hadouken. I, uh, I respect that Street Fighter lore knowledge there. William. As you can tell with the monk style play, uh, playthrough that I'm playing here and the references to Mr. Miyagi, and Cobra Kai. I am a big martial arts fan and I love Street Fighter. One of my favorite game franchises of all time. Okay, so this is all barred off. I think this is added by Helgen Reborn. So it's going to force us around the other side probably to uh, enforce that we're kicking off that dialogue properly in that correct location. Looks like all these patrols, though, are, are going to be backed up. We'll try to take a shortcut around, though. here. Oh, we can pick the lock. Yeah, the fighting games, at least if you want to play them competitively, they do require some degree of reaction time. Uh, I am way older than most of the players online. But I would put my reaction time against theirs any time of the week, any day of the week. But I would say that mostly it has to do with anticipating the uh, the correct things at the correct time than it does to just purely react to things as they happen. Um, let's see. 
I am not here to cause any trouble, I just wish to talk. Then you need to give me a reason why we shouldn't just kill you where you stand. I have an urgent matter that I need to discuss with Valerius. I know that he's here. Never heard of him. You are mistaken. There's nobody by that name here. Now, be on your way. We don't want to hurt you. I have an urgent message from Marcus Janus. I know they know each other and are close. Uh, I must be given passage. Don't know him either. I'm beginning to run out of patience with you. Leave now. Listen, I know who you are, and I know that you are not bandits. I know you will not attack me if I am coming here on benevolent terms, so you need to let me speak to the Valerius, please. I don't know who you are, stranger, or what you want, but I advise you to choose your words very carefully from here on out. Okay. If you need more proof, here, I have a gift from Marcus. It's Valerius's wife's wedding ring. Let me see that. Hmm. Did you say Marcus Janus? From the war, Marcus Janus. Why didn't you say so? One criticism I have of this mod, and uh, also of the second Great War mod, is that the dialogue gets a little bit tedious. They could have cut a lot of this stuff out and let us just get to the chase a little more uh, concisely. Uh, I did, and I have a letter from him to Valerius, his eyes only, which I have mentioned several times already. Very well. I will take you inside. But all of us have our eyes on you. And if you try and start trouble, it will be the last trouble you ever start. Follow me. Message for you from Marcus Janus. He was alone, and I don't thought get you would too want far to ahead. talk to him. What? Marcus Janus? Offering, have you gone completely mad? That's impossible. I thought the same thing, sir, but it's true. He showed me a letter to you. Unworthy Marcus Marcus is seal. It's glory. real, all right. And, sir, somehow Marcus has found Sabrina's wedding ring and sent it to you. Very well. We'll see about that. Well, Frank, you are dismissed. All of you may resume your patrols. Yes, sir. I don't know who you are or why you're here, so you'd better have some good answers to my questions. May I see that ring? Yes, you may have it, actually. It is yours, anyway. You say you were sent by Marcus Janus? Where is he now? He is currently in Falkreath, waiting for me to return with your response. Do you know how he came into possession of this ring? Uh, I do not know, but he must have found it in the Imperial, Imperial City after you were imprisoned. At least, this one assumes. Yes, yes, I suppose that may have been possible, but this is all so overwhelming. And I must say, I am very sorry for the loss of your family, especially in such a way. Thank you. I love them very deeply. I nearly went mad after they were murdered by those Almeri dogs. I wanted nothing but vengeance. Every day of my life is burned with nothing but the desire to make them pay for their murders. But enough of that. Let's see this letter you brought. Mm, yes. <laughs> Marcus Janus, it's certainly you, all right. What do you want with me? Tell me, how has he found me here? Oh, it looks like uh, Amelie over there is bugged with it. Oh, she figured it out. Um. He heard of a uh, bandit named Val had taken over the fort. He thought it might be you. Very clever, that one. Always was. Bandits. <laughs> it's not far from the truth, though. Fitting ruse is that's about what we've become. Living our lives in the shadows, hiding and skulking about like some caged skeever looking for his next piece of cheese. Mmm, now I want some cheese. 
I think the problem is I'm just hungry, so every time somebody mentions food, I'm like, mmm, donuts. Listen, uh, you are an honorable man. He said you served with distinction in the war. You do not need to take this path that you are on. Honor? Bah. Any honor I had died with the first Almeri diplomat I assassinated. I'm not the same man he knew. But no doubt he's filled your head with tales of glory from the war. Stories exactly. I'm drooling over here too, Simpa. I'm afraid that man no longer exists. This hatred. It's <laughs> I thought you'd like that. Taken my life. The Homer reference. I suppose I would still be rotting down in that damn prison were it not for Marcus. Now I'm just rotting here instead. And rot is nonetheless still rot. The only difference, really, is where and how. Yeah, that's the thing that not all of this stuff fits with every character and their backstory and their intentions and things like that, so... Um, I actually hadn't intended on taking Jagasta through this, but just from a pure role-playing thing, the letter that you get from Patsy uh, in Whiterun, um, I don't think that Jagasta would have ignored it, that, that plea for help. Yes, I appreciate that you may be between a rock and a hard place here, but uh, maybe Marcus can help. He seems to be a man of some resource, and he wanted to meet you. Why would he want to help me? After he sees what I've become, he'll leave soon enough. <clears throat> go tell him I'll meet with him regardless. At least then we can say our proper goodbyes to one another. Never got to do that before. Now, be gone. Please, leave. I will do this for you. Um, that's the other thing about this Helgen Reborn stuff, is that there does seem to be a significant about amount of back and forth. <laughs> uh, retreading the same roads that you were just in. What are you doing over there, Amelie? She lost her torch again. It just feels right somehow. Having this new life as an adventurer. It's what I was meant to do. Is this some new game that uh, young people play that I am not aware of? Hmm. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm not going to walk all the way through that road again. Just fast travel back to Falkreath. Yeah, I don't feel guilty making use of fast travel in, in this kind of errand situation. You have uh, changed from the fancy clothes into the armor, yes? And it also looks like that other guy is not sitting on your face anymore. Seems you have cleaned up your act a bit. Oh uh, yes, this one talked to Val. Uh, he agreed to meet with you. Excellent. Well done, my friend. I'm ready to go. But there's just <laughs> I see what you're saying, Magus. I'm getting too old for fighting. Well, at least by myself. I see what you're doing over there. I was hoping that it wouldn't be too much of a burden on you to escort me to the keep. There's another 250 gold in it for you, if you will. <sighs> okay. Um, all right, you can keep your money, but uh, stick close to me, yes? I'm right behind you, but don't go too fast. Unlike you young ones, I'm not cut out for this shite anymore. Ah, you need an adventurer's rest. Uh, Amelie's... Uh idea for a shack for adventurers with bad knees, yes? <laughs> okay, let's see here. Let's fast travel back there. Back and forth, back and forth. Batman's here. Anybody who may or may not be criminal scum, watch out. Batman is here.
Yeah, so Magus, I'm actually accumulating a lot of gold right now just because uh, that training for pickpocket and light armor, it, once I do get to Windhelm, is going to be quite expensive. So um, I do have an abundance of it right now, but that's not going to stay that way once I get to a trainer on which to spend said money. Sienna is the name of the uh, follower that I was trying to think of, and I think Haggis actually uh, pointed that out, and I did not know what he was talking about as the, at the time because of the, uh, <laughs> the stream delay. Uh, we still have Marcus with us, yes. Joker's better. Oh, those are fighting words. What is it with these Imperials and their mass abundance of names? Valerius, I'm sure this is quite a shock to you. Terribly unexpected. I came here to check on my family. Reminds me of someone I knew back in the day named Daenerys. It just feels right. So I decided it was in both our interests for two old friends to meet what I was meant to do. At last. Eric, shut up. I can't hear the dialogue. <laughs> Marcus, I'm very sorry. But whatever the circumstances, it does my eyes good to see you again after all these years. Yes. Same here, old friend. Same here. So, keepers of Hatu in Skyrim. Who would have ever dreamed of such a time? All right, Janice. What is it you really want? Don't forget, I know you. So out with it. Yes, you do know me, old friend, better than most. Very well. I aim to rebuild this town. So apparently, Yargu Zwile Zu Zwile Zwile. I hope I didn't just put a curse on myself. I'm here on other business. Yes, yes, I know, Valerius, but if Mother what I propose best, is true, then Mother Nature, she knows everything. Mutually beneficial to you are really attention starved, aren't you, Amelie? After that, if we're not in agreement, we can part ways and you'll likely never see me. But Valerius, there's plenty of time to get to all that later. Right now, let's just catch up on old times. Well, you're in luck, Janice. Those bandits left some fresh wine downstairs, and I need a drink. Yes, I could use a drink too, old friend. Let me say goodbye to my new friend, and I'll join you. I can't thank you enough for your help. As agreed, here's your compensation. Uh, yes, thank you, but you never mentioned rebuilding Helgen and Dalnau. Why not? I apologize for that. I certainly wasn't intentionally keeping anything from you. I just wanted to meet with Valerius before I... Indeed it does, Hastor. Yes. I want to make Helgen my home. I hope I didn't just inadvertently, like, wake the dead or anything like that. You know like I'm reading from the Necronomicon or something. And Helgen was always a place my family visited when I was born. I have many fond memories of those days. And now... Let's just say he'd be happy that I sent him. And from what I could tell as we Oh, can, Amelie has a crush on uh everything up. Jagasta, huh? Nothing impossible. Hmm. Then we can take a look at what's left of these buildings and begin rebuilding from there. Everybody is constantly wanting to make out with him for some reason. I mean he's not a bad looking Gajit, but that'll give Valerius and I some time to catch up and come up with a plan. Can you return to see us in a day or so? Sure, I will see you later then. Thank you once again, friend. I'll see you then. Oh! Jagasta. Alright. Hopefully that was just a one-time thing. And not a systemic failure. <clears throat> <laughs> if it's just a crash, I can deal with it.
Ah, okay. It was the crash curse that Batman has us. It's cargoing marbles. Uh, no need to apologize. Sometimes people just, you know, need to gargle some marbles. Hilarious oh, I gotta go through all this again. A quick save toward the end of it. Valerius, I'm sure this is quite a shock to you. Terribly unexpected. I came here to check on my family. But it appears none of them survived. Mother knows and best, I you but Mother here, Nature, so she knows it everything. Both our interests for two old friends to meet again. At last. It just feels right somehow, oh, you're having right. this new life as an adventurer. Marcus, I'm very sorry. The uh, fun fact, marbles are one of the few things that you can eat that look exactly the same coming out as they did going in. Same here. So, the keepers of Hatu and Skyrim. Who would have ever dreamed of such a time? Marbles and corn, I think, are the only two things. You really want. Don't forget, I know you, so out with it. Yes, you do know me, old friend, better than most. Very well. I aim to rebuild this town and make her my home. <laughs> rebuild. <laughs> Sounds like Bugsy Cat has some experience. I'm helping you or anyone else rebuild a town. I'm here on other business. Yes, yes, I know, Valerius, but if what I propose is true... Are you sure you don't want to know how I know that? ...mutually beneficial to one another. All I'm asking is that you hear me out. After that, if we're not in agreement, we can part ways and we'll likely never see me again. But, Valerius, there's plenty of time to get to all that later. Right now, let's just catch up on old times. Well, you're in luck, Janice. Those bandits left some fresh wine downstairs, and I need a drink. Yes, I could use a drink too. Oh, uh, misplaced cursed. It was meant for Loki. To my new friend, and I'll join you. I can't thank you enough for your help. As agreed, here's your compensation. Okay, so hopefully the curse only lasts for one dialogue cycle, so we can just go through all of this and not crash. I have many fun. Let's just say, from what I could, then we can take a. I'm sure that. Why don't you? Can you return to see us in a day? Thank you once again, friend. I'll see you then. Now then, Marcus, let's go get that wine. You're in one okay. Piece, so I, trust your trip I think we're good. Are we good? Yes. I think we're good. That's what it sounded like to me, too. More of a Cthulhu thing, or like an Evil Dead uh, Army of Darkness type. Okay. I'm hoping that was the uh, the off switch for the curse and not not turning it back on again because that is three times now, and uh, if we crash again, we know who to blame. Uh, let's see here. What to do next? So we have a day to burn before we have to head back to Helgen and discuss matters in private. Ooh, sounds clandestine. Or pervy, or both. Um, is there anything else to do in? Oh yeah, we could do the. We could find that dog for Laud. Okay, one more fast travel. Yeah. Beetlejuice, Candyman. You know, with all these remakes and everything, I'm surprised I haven't heard anything about a Beetlejuice remake. That seems like a prime low-hanging fruit for some movie studio. Okay, what time is it? What time is it? 2.36 p.m. We have time for this. Bloody Mary? Yeah, all kind of the same thing.
Oh, here's that dog. You are exactly what I was looking for. Uh, you were looking for me? Yeah, I think you'll be just what I need. You see, my name is Bobbis. And I have a problem I think you can help sort out. Babis. Almost sounds like Barbus has a Scrantonian accent. <laughs> Not quite. I just got to make fun of the uh, the Nipa folks in the chat. Um, all right. So, what could a dog need help with? My master and I had a bit of a falling out. We got into an argument and it got rather heated. Oh, that sounds He's interesting, Simba. I will look into that. Find someone who can settle our disagreement. That's where you come in. Uh, okay. That sounds easy enough. Let's go find him, yes? Thank you. Now, since he banished me, Vile's been rather weak. He can't manifest very far from one of his shrines. I know there's a cult that worships him at Hamar's shame. That's a good he idea, Buxy. If this worked out, I'll make sure you're rewarded. And just don't trust any offer he makes you, okay? Um, okay, so he is... Okay, so the quest is just to follow him. This might be one of the few characters that I play that actually can keep up. And then some with Barbus. Of course, Barbus seems to be being considerate at this point. Most of the times I play this quest, he runs really quickly, really far ahead. Oh, now he's kicking it up a notch. Now he's taking a nap. Okay, uh, well, we know where he's going. I wonder if I can pull some fast travel nonsense. This road in between Helgen and Falkreath is getting a lot of play. whole lot of action. It just feels right somehow, having this new life as an adventurer. What I was meant to do. So we're just going to head to Hamar's shame here on our own. Oh, look, there's Barbus. He followed us. Good. We need our walking stick, too. More support for the back. Okay, so this seems like uh, uh, the Dovazul. I'm not fluent. But at least it's not some ancient like Latin curse or something like that from a, from a Book of the Dead. Uh, no, that's not a quarterstaff. That is the walking stick from uh, Campfires. It actually acts as a shield. And it gives you uh, a stamina buff, I believe. 
and you're able to upgrade it like you would a shield as well. Kind of a nice piece that's overlooked quite often, I think. Uh, did he just run inside? I was looking at the chat and I heard some barking and there was like a, a gray blur and then he was gone. So I guess he's probably in here, huh? Alright, we'll see how this goes. Death Valley Driver. Oh, that was a good one. Neck snap. Uh, yes, you can shield bash with it. It works exactly like a regular shield. Um, ooh, meat. Yes, please. Uh, it has an armor rating and all that. Uh, it just doesn't look like a shield. Uh, walking stick is, yeah, it's even classified as a shield. Uh, light armor, 19 armor. Although that's upgraded because I'm running uh, the signature equipment mod that upgrades your gear uh, as you keep it equipped automatically. And yes, you can block with it, you can shield bash with it, you can power bash with it. Pretty cool. Um, that actually uh, made me realize that you can actually replace uh, a shield mod or a model with any kind of other model. So if you'd like to, uh, you know, have a, a dagger or something that you can block with, um, you can create a shield in the creation kit uh, and then use just like a, a dagger uh, for the model. And you'll be able to block with that dagger in your offhand. Cool stuff. In fact, I think there's a mod that takes uh, advantage of that. Uh, it's like a scout armor mod or something. It just has a steel dagger that's uh, like a backwards grip. Um, and it's technically a shield in the game. It's kind of a cool aesthetic, I think. And actually, Couch Warrior does the same thing. He's got a, a custom shield mod that he uses uh, that is a dagger that allows him to block with a dagger in his hand. Okay. Backhand to the face. And we have contracted Sanguinaire Vampiris. Uh, but I think... Next time we enter combat, we'll be cured of that because of how I have... Oops, is it healing touch? Removes all poison and disease effects, and that's hooked up to Okado's recital, so we shouldn't have to worry about that, but I will check it when we're done with this dungeon here. Oh, that also reminds me that I need to go ahead and upgrade uh, something. Is it Divine Armor, maybe, that I'm running? Okay, he uses the dagger from the King Crusader set, the DCR King Crusader. Oh, that does include shield daggers. It's not It's not a custom, custom mod, then. I always assumed that uh, he had you, or he did it himself. Uh, Beofish, um, he had you make that specifically for him, but that that's cool. I didn't know that that came with that. That's a cool armor set too. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think this is in the Paladin branch, and this just recently upgraded. So. 
Let's take a look and see what we have here. Beacon of Light. Divine Armor restores health equal to 5% of your armor rating. We already have a healing over time that we have hooked up to Okado's recital, so uh, we don't need that. Divine Vengeance. After you block an attack, increase your physical damage by 15%. Uh, we already have perks that take care of this too, although I think it's mainly just a timed block thing. But this will still be useful for sure. 15% is 15%. And that's not a timed block either, that's just blocking anything. When you get hit, deals damage equal to 3% of your total health to the attacker, and damage is increased by 1% per spell level. Um, so damage reflection, also helpful. Increases armor rating by 25%. Uh, this is not going to help with our unarmed damage, though, because I think unarmed damage goes off of... Uh, stamina, I believe, and uh, light armor skill, not your armor rating like it does in vanilla. Although just a, a straight armor rating boost would be nice as well. Yeah, Bugsy Cat, uh, I've seen that as well. Um, there is also another dual wield um, mod that I think allows you to block just by like holding back. Obviously that wouldn't work with like a 360 movement mod, but I tend not to use those anyway. Oh, more damage reflection here. Spell mana cost decrease would also be helpful. And that's not going to be useful because it requires a shield or melee weapon. Okay. Um, let's see here. I kind of like the physical damage if you block an attack for 10 seconds. Taking it. Yeah, that's an old mod. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's just like dual wield blocking or something like that. Uh, it's been around for a long time. Uh, I think they also give you some more options of, of how to enable block in uh, when you're dual wielding two one-handed weapons. Uh, I haven't used it. Uh, I should probably play around with it a little bit, but I haven't had a dual wield character in a while that actually needed to block. He always had some other ways of of defending himself. Uh, how about nixing the torch there while we're trying to sneak Amelie? Okay, I'm hoping we can sneak up on this guy and take him out with a sneak attack before we... Oh! Swing and a miss! Yeah, it worked out. Oh, knee to the ovaries and flip her over the hip. All right. Now, is this a dark face bug or is this just a... I think this is just a, a dark-skinned Dunmer. This does not look like a gray face bug to me. Let's uh, take off the gloves. Try to look at the hands. Actually, let's just go ahead and disrobe the poor vampire. Yeah, it matches with the rest of her skin, so we're good. No dark face bugs. So we need some night eye anyway, it's getting dark up here. Power attacks deal extra damage. I can at least disenchant that. So I've been thinking about what uh, enchantments to add to my robes here. I think I definitely want unarmed damage. 
I think that goes without saying there. Maybe some uh, magical resistance. Um, maybe some block fortification. Uh, destruction. Amplification and cost reduction would also be nice. So, uh, kind of non-canon, off-camera stuff, I might uh, try to at least go through the rat way to get the uh, gloves of the pugilist from what's-his-name down in there, Gion the Fist. Lots of slippery ice. Also, vampires. Batman. Okay, he just threw down the smoke pellet and he disappeared from the chat. <laughs> Who knew the Batman knew the Dova Zool, though? I feel like we barely got to know him. Is someone there? Huh? Hoya! Oh boy, that hurts. Hopefully, we can recover. Couldn't tell if that was Amelie or somebody else. Okay, so that spell perk that I took for the Divine Armor, uh, well, this is one that I took earlier. Uh, it's called like Last Chance or something like that. Uh, once you get down below 10% health, it, it recovers a certain amount of health automatically for you. It looked like that kicked in after the bleed out phase, so that's still useful for sure. Uh, would be more useful if it kicked in before I entered the bleed out phase, but and it probably will if I don't take so much damage as to uh, completely bypass the 10% and go right to uh, the bleed out phase. Look at those forgotten magic uh, tomes distribution is really stingy uh, with default settings. We did get the ring of uh, virulence, which is not something useful to Jagasta because he's not going to be taking the, uh, not going to be doing any of the dark mage stuff, but uh, or any of the the poison stuff from the druid spells. But it is working, because we did get that enchanted ring. We'll take the potions. Uh, really hard to be sneaky with Amelie and Eric, especially Eric in the heavy armor, clunking around behind us. And Amelie, uh, they're both insisting on bringing the torches with them. So I'm thinking maybe it would be best to just abandon the whole stealth thing for now. Ooh, we got a skill book here though. Destruction, that helps. Even though at such a low level uh, destruction training would be cheap, uh, ideally I'd want to save that for later game, but uh, in a role play we're probably not going to be uh, optimizing things like that. So we'll take the skill books when we can get them. Reading mod descriptions? Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's really quite necessary and not enough people do. Uh, 
Um, I've been having an issue with this uh, mod loadout that it seems like the aiming is off, and I think it might have to do with the customizable camera. Whoa. Um, it seems like uh, I have to aim really high with any kind of projectile to get it to hit the spot, and sometimes it doesn't even matter. It's very stubborn. It wants to go low anyway. And it doesn't seem to be as much of an issue in other profiles, uh, especially with archery, it seems to be just fine. But with like uh, magic projectiles and even like the throwing knives and stuff, it seems to be an issue, so I gotta try to fiddle with that a little bit. Uh, I am running the proper aiming feature of the customizable camera. And it seems to work fine uh, in shorter ranges, but longer range, it, it, it seems to be very pronounced. So yeah, proper aiming. Uh, and it seems to be an issue in first person as well. So I don't know what's going on with that, but it has been a bit annoying at times. Uh, yes, I do have a proper aiming mod on its own, but I think the customizable camera uh, does pretty much the same thing uh, if you enable the proper aiming fix. getting enthusiastic about repentance. Uh, you're talking about something separate from customizable camera, Beofish? If so, I'll have to look into it. If it does a, a better job with the magic projectiles. Uh, than the aiming fix provided by customizable cameras, then I'll have to look into it. But the uh, the proper aiming mod uh, did not seem to make any difference to me. Hi, Bella. Are you seeing this? Am I seeing this? It could just be another dream. Barbus, you can fight back, you know. Okay, we're getting pretty strong here. <laughs> uh, just double checking. We are still on legendary difficulty, yeah. Um, but as we've seen before, uh, some encounters are just still really tough, and some end up being really easy. And having all these followers definitely helps quite a bit. Still no uh, spell tomes from Forgotten Magic. That's kind of a bummer. Uh, excuse me, uh, Lord Vile. By all means, let's hear it. It's the least I could do since you already helped me grant one final wish for my last worshippers. They were suffering so from vampirism and begged me for a cure. Then you came and ended their misery. I couldn't have planned it better myself. So, what's your heart's desire? What kind of deal can we strike? Uh, I am just here to return your dog. Ah, oh, that insufferable pup. Forget it. Request denied. No deal. I'm glad to be rid of him, even if it does mean I'm stuck in this pitiful shrine. 
in the back end of nowhere. Well, oh yeah, it's bashed. I'm definitely getting it. It's it's uh. The level lists are fine. We we saw the enchanted uh, enchanted ring, uh, and I've also found other books without without changing the load order. So the load order is fine. It's just uh, default settings. It they don't they don't uh, proc too often, um, and that's the way I kind of like it too because these spells can be quite powerful and being forgotten magic and everything they should be rare. So. It makes it more of a big deal when you do actually find it. I kind of like it that way. Uh, okay, what's your offer? There's an axe. An incredibly powerful axe. An axe powerful enough for me to have quite a bit of fun, indeed. If you bring it to me, I'll grant you my boon. No strings attached. No messy surprises. It's not for you. As I recall, it's resting in Rhyme Rock Burrow. Does anybody know the Kajiti uh, relationship with Clavicus Vile? Is he a thing? In the Kajiti Pantheon? If anybody knows off the top of their head? He seems like a pretty good fit with the, you know, the personality and the tendencies of the Khajiit. Are you intimidated by Clavicus Vile, Vile, Eric? I do not blame you. He's not a dater they worship. Okay. Good enough for me. Oh, there's a roll of paper. We can use that to write a new thesis. Which we do need. Yeah, if there's not a whole lot of lore behind uh, the Khajiit and a certain deity, then they probably, you know, don't have much to do with them. Okay. Let's take a minute to think about what our next step is. So Clavicus Vile kind of wants us to head over here to Rhyme Rock Borough, which is way up northwest from where we are. Uh, so he's going to take us quite far out of our way uh, to gather this axe for him and then bring it all the way back. Um, we would actually like to head up toward Windhelm. I, as a player, would actually like to get to Windhelm to take advantage of the light armor training and the, the pickpocket training that is available there. Um, Jagasta would like to go pay his respects to Azura at the shrine up here. But we have a talking dog and a talking statue with obviously powerful magic uh, urging us on. So that, that probably would make this more of a priority. So let's see what Barbus has to say about it. Maybe that will sway our decision one way or the other. So tell me, Barbus, what is the story behind this rueful axe that Clavicus has us chasing down? One of Clavicus's little jests. A wizard named Sebastian Lord had a daughter who worshipped her scene. When the daughter became a werewolf, it drove Sebastian over the edge. He couldn't stand to see his little girl take on such a bestial form. The wizard wished for the ability to end his daughter's curse. <laughs> Clavicus gave him an axe. Uh, yeah, in the vanilla game, you cannot dismiss Barbus, I don't think. But I think I'm running a mod, or maybe this is part of AFT or the unofficial patch or something that allows you to tell him to get off your, get off your back. Um, however, I don't think Barbus counts towards your follower count. So in the vanilla game, if you're not running like an AFT or something like that, it allows uh, multiple followers. Uh, he can be quite useful. Uh, 
Um, okay, so we know the story behind the Rufal Axe. Let's deliberate on this, yeah? Yeah, Barbus is quite powerful. Um, and yeah, that's... There are... Uh, a couple of the deities that Haster mentioned that uh, I don't know how they fit into the lore, but for the most part... Uh, that jives with my knowledge on it. And I didn't think Clavicus Vile was one of them, and that, that seems to confirm it. So, yeah. Um... I think that, uh, you know, hearing this magical entity, um, both in the form of this dog and the obvious immense power emanating from that statue, he would be compelled to, uh, not to put a pin in this and, and let it wait. I think that makes it a priority for Jagasta to kind of take care of what this, this entity is asking him for. Um... And, you know, it seems like a pretty innocent quest just to go to retrieve this axe from this cave. So, why not? We'll go take care of it. Um, I think another thing... Ow, okay. So, I think what we're going to do, since we have a day to burn before we have to come back and talk to uh, Val and Marcus anyway... Uh, is we're going to head back up to uh, the White Run Stables, uh, and we're going to hitch a ride up to Solitude, uh, and that's going to take quite a bit of, of walking and travel again. Um, so I think this might be a good place to to end it. We've been streaming for a good two and a half hours now. That's a solid. That's a uh, a solid stream, I think, and I think we've come to a pretty good place to stop anyway so I think I'm gonna call it here uh, but first I'm gonna plug a couple people's channels uh, everything is in the description below uh, let's see so couch warrior he is my favorite content creator uh, on YouTube in terms of uh, Skyrim maybe in terms of anything um, but his channel is below yeah it doesn't really feel like that long I I'm glad it's been been entertaining uh, thanks for the good feedback on that, uh, Loki and Magus. Um, so yeah, go check out Couch Warrior's channel. He streams on a bi-weekly basis, which is not that regular, but, uh, he, his, the production quality on his stuff is top-notch. It's second to none. Uh, it, it's like a cinematic movie experience, and he streams live. He does it on the fly. It's extremely, uh, entertaining, extremely impressive. Um, so go check that out. Uh, go subscribe to his channel. Uh, and if you enjoyed the company of everybody in the chat, uh, they all show up for his streams. Uh, so come hang out with us. Uh, the Wind is still working on her load order. I think she usually streams on Sundays and Wednesdays, but those are always uh, entertaining streams. Uh, she's over on Twitch. Her link is below. Um, Although I'm hearing rumblings that uh, she is getting closer to the end of her load order, I think. I hope. Um, Magus80, you've seen him in the chat as well. He does stream quite regularly when he's got uh, a load order, but I think he's been reconfiguring some things lately as well. Um, so, uh, coming soon, I think. It sounds like he's getting to the end uh, of that effort as well. Yeah, make sure that nobody plays with Jagasta's tail, that's for sure. I think that was the least of his worries, seeing as, as some of the things that were going on in that room before he fell asleep. Uh, so yeah, check out Magus's channel. Go ahead and go subscribe to him and uh, come hang out with us next time he streams. Uh, Baofish also has a great channel. Uh, he streams very regularly. Um, he has some more uh, tutorial, instructional, modding type stuff that he does on his channel quite regularly. And uh, he also does some character concepts that are actually really quite excellent. Um, 
I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing more of a lot of his character concepts. I can't wait for his Ashlander concept as well. Uh, should be should be uh, quite entertaining. Um, so go check that stuff out. Uh, William McNee, you've seen him kicking around in the chat as well. He also does have a YouTube channel that's been around for quite some time on a very long-running series uh, with his Dana Fey and now Tariel uh, series. Uh, Wood Elf, uh, quite badass, loves mead. So some fun stuff there. Uh, EJ Lowell, uh, speaking of production quality, uh, she has a very regular release schedule, uh, not live streaming, uh, pre-recorded stuff, but um, uh, rivals Couch Warrior in some aspects. She writes her own music, uh, writes her own scripts, she has a very long-running cohesive story uh, involving lots of different player characters that she has running around in the same universe and they interact and everything and it, it's kind of one of the best things ever. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, 57 Strudel. Didn't see her in the chat today, but that's okay. Um, she has a series of novels, fan fiction. Uh, so if you like to read fantasy stuff, uh, go check that out. Link is in the description. Uh, very well written. Uh, good stuff. And then, finally, last but not least, Darnair Gaming, uh, also known as Loki, has a YouTube channel. Uh, does some streaming from time to time. Uh, trying to put together a new computer, I think, saving up for that. Um, she's kind of plagued with, or he's kind of plagued with some uh, technical difficulties with crashing and, and technical limitations on an old laptop, but definitely some entertaining uh, stuff to be had on his channel as well. So I would go check that out. Um, and I think that's it for now. Uh, thanks everybody for joining and hanging out with me for a couple hours on a Saturday. Uh, taking time out of a weekend to spend with me and the chat. Always appreciate it. Um, hope to put out a final episode. Oh, a finale episode, really? in the next few days, but your game is definitely borked. Oh, is it borked to the point where you can't put out that final episode? I'm giving everybody motion sickness now. <laughs> uh, or are you putting out the finale because the game is borked? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I think all of our games... Yeah, all of our save files would die a, die a miserable death if we let them go on long enough. It's just the nature of the beast. But, you know, every ending is uh, a new beginning, right? Yes, definitely. We will rebuild it. We have the technology. All right, so thanks again for hanging out, everybody. Uh, until next time, be well, and I'll see you then. Bye.